Chances are you probably have a smartphone, but not many of us have a smart home like the one we're about to enter. If you're a hardcore techie, this just might be the house of your dreams, where almost everything is rigged to be controlled with a simple touch screen. But tonight, ABC's Neil Karlinski finds out the dream home can lead to some rude awakenings. Stacy Higginbotham may live in a normal Austin, Texas neighborhood, but inside her home, it's more like the Jetsons. Now say hello to our new maid, Rosie Elroy. Can you throw a forward pass? Or at least about as close as you can get to that right now, and all the weirdness that goes with it. Okay, Ubi, play some music. Okay, I will put it there. Okay, so maybe some technology isn't quite ready for yeah, prime that's, time. That's the dumbest gadget I own. But Stacy's world is a small window. When you touch it, it turns on. Into what we could all have with a little patience and perseverance. A seamless future AT&T calls digital life. You leave the house in good shape? Yeah, yeah of course. Where you can remote control virtually your entire house from your phone. Yeah, sure you did. Smart home gadgets are poised to be the next big thing. Sales of smart gadgets are expected to exceed 36 million units in the next two years. Her devices and appliances are all connected to each other and to the internet, which means Stacy can control them remotely from her phone. When I look at the app, I can see that the garage door is closed, and when I want it to open, I just hit it. And boom, it opens. What, what's the big deal of having a smart garage door? You can actually look at this app that says, it's a few hey, word. you left your garage door open, Stacy, and you're at work. And here, now you can close it. And you've got a weird door lock too, huh? It works like a normal door lock too. So you can latch it, unlatch it. Yeah. When you open the door, there's a keypad and you just boop. Once inside, she spends a lot of time talking to herself. Well, actually, to one of her many voice-controlled gadgets. This is the Amazon Echo. Alexa, what is Nightline? Nightline, the late-night hard and soft news program broadcast by ABC in the United States. Pretty cool. There you go. You want to give it a try? But even amazing Alexa can stumble. What is the stock market doing? Hmm, I'm not sure what you meant by that question. I take it there's a lot of that sort of thing going on in the house. It doesn't always work. If you're going to live in a smart home, you've got to be prepared to live in a home that is a bit of a trial and error process. Are you an extremely and abnormally patient person? Because your whole house is filled with potential problems. I spend probably about an hour a week just troubleshooting my house. So, and, and that's probably because I have, a, I have a good 40 gadgets in here. Her smart house might outsmart a thief. That's pretty cool. But could it be an easy target for another kind of criminal? I mean, do you ever think about that when you wire up your house that someone could control? That, that's not a huge concern of mine. That's a lot of effort to go through to like. So you're not too worried about it? Who's going to come after me? That's what this Ohio couple probably thought until someone hacked into their baby monitor and started yelling at their newborn. They spoke to Fox 19 in Ohio. I also heard a voice again start screaming at my daughter. He was screaming, um, wake up, baby, wake up, baby. So we invited a professional hacker with her permission to try to break in electronically. I have my directional antenna. But Amir Etemadi, whose real job is to help companies find weaknesses in their own products, demonstrates what malicious hackers could do parked just outside your home. So you can literally drive up and down in this neighborhood with that weird looking antenna sticking out the car and you can figure out the Wi-Fi from inside people's homes. Absolutely, yeah. If you can get in, what can you basically see? Files, emails, conversations, everything that is on their computer becomes easier for me to access once I'm on their wireless network. Back inside, it's a tech geek paradise. I can't even believe I'm asking you to show me your light bulb. These are smart and they're connected. So we can do things like, this is sunset. What's happening? Do you, oh, do you, feel, like, the do you feel like the sun setting in here? A little here? warm glow on you now. A little yeah. warm glow. We can do like deep sea. Well, look at that. How much are these light bulbs? Okay, so you have to buy a starter kit and that is $200. And then each additional light bulb is 60 bucks. 60 bucks for a light bulb? Come on. I know, but they're so fun. These last for like 22 years, theoretically. 22 years? They're LEDs. Aside from the gadgets lighting up her house, some go on her body. Ringley, 
Ring me. A ring that lets her know when she's getting a call or text. But it's not working. Okay, right now it is not working. That is a Excellent point. A representative from Ringley says that perhaps Stacy didn't set up her ring properly. When we reached out to the company reps from some of these gadgets that didn't perform well, they told Nightline that they're constantly working to improve their products. Back outside, Amir is running his own tests. It turns out hacking is a two-step process. First, getting access to Stacy's Wi-Fi, something Amir calls the handshake. So it worked? You got it? Yeah, we got it. We got the handshake. Now he has to run what he's found through a decoding program to crack the password. And here's where it seems that technology's frustrations can work for you. Because even weeks later, our hacker's program still hadn't unraveled Stacy's password. So with more than a little help from Stacy, like her actual password, Amir shows off what he can do once he has access to the network. We're gonna go ahead and turn on some of her appliances. I think within five years, most people will have at least... That is something out of a horror movie right there. Man, right. can you imagine it? <laughs> like we knew something was gonna go on? That scared, That's, that, that, that yeah. scared the tar of me. That was, that was a real jump. <laughs> and we're gonna go ahead and unlock the door, her back door. Oh. I think maybe. that was your lock. That you was our lock. lock. Let's go look, come on. And I, I that isn't any laughing it. matter. See, but that's the real fear, right? That, you know, the other stuff's kind of funny, whatever, but I mean, someone can unlock your house. Although, if someone really wants to get into your house, you can pick a lock. Yeah, but isn't that the modern day, there it goes again. I mean, isn't that the modern day lock pick? Is, is a, there's a guy outside with a laptop who's opening and closing your door lock. It is, and I, I don't like it. The lamp went on and off. The blinds went up and down. Amir was in, even though he was outside. When we got the two of them together, Stacy had the same questions anyone else would have right about now. If I don't want a guy like you hacking into my network, what are the things I should do as a homeowner? Make sure that you keep the software up to date and make sure that you use a strong passphrase that's unique and contains special characters. Your best bet is a uh, password that's over 15 characters. You don't have to be smart to have a smart home. What you really need is a heavy dose of patience because for the millions ready to embrace it, the future is now if you can just get it to work. Alexa, set a timer for two minutes. and sometimes she doesn't do it. <laughs> I'm Neil Karlinski for Nightline in Austin, Texas. So what do you think about smart homes? Are the benefits of high-tech living worth the potential risks? Head to our Nightline Facebook page and let us know.